Hello folks and welcome to another Wild Astro sort of gear review I suppose. It's more an instructional um, video, an informative uh, documentary if you like than a review. Um, the title of the film says it all really. How strong is Hilleberg's curl on fabric? Um, now I've come up with a bit of an experiment to try and give everyone a visual kind of representation of just how strong um, Hilleberg's fabric is. And the experiment I've devised is it's fairly straightforward, um, but it actually hopefully will give everyone a bit of a, a feel uh, for, for just how much weight is required to damage this fabric. Now, for this experiment, and, and there's probably a simpler way of doing this, I, I admit, but being, being a, an electrician and having a particular set of tools to hand on a daily basis, this is what I've come up with. What you will need if you want to replicate this experiment yourself is some rope, a couple of pairs of sturdy pliers, a couple of uh, decent sized G clamps, a measuring jug and some water, quite a lot of water really. Um, you will also need a 25 litre uh, water tank, water can, and a bean bag. Now, you're also obviously going to need some samples of the curl on fabric, which you can get hold of if you order one of Hilleberg's tent catalogues. Um, this, this is what it comes with. Um, now each of these is, is quite uh, quite simple. You've got what they call a commonly used ripstop fabric down here. Um, and if you have a look underneath, it tells you that the tear strength on that is roughly 1.1 to 2.5 kilograms. You've then got the, the different versions of the curl on fabric. You've got curl on 1000, 1200, 1800 and 2500 there. Now, as I say, I've come up with an experiment to try and give this a bit of a go and see just how accurate the numbers are that are given for each of these types of curl on. So, I'm gonna get the experiment set up and I'll bring you back uh, when I'm done. So anyone that's ever ordered the Hilleberg tent catalogue will be quite familiar with this uh, this document. Um, stronger is better is the is the very bold statement made at the top and of course stronger is great and stronger is better in terms of uh, durability obviously but in terms of weight it, it is can be a problem. But um, here's the five different pieces of material we're going to be testing with this experiment and I've got two of these. Um, so that's great because I can I can test both types of all types of material twice and get a bit of an average reading. So we're going to start with this here, the commonly used ripstop. Now each of these pieces of fabric comes with a little notch cut in the bottom of it. I don't know if you can see that. There it is, just there. Each piece of fabric comes with a similar little nick in the bottom of it, like that. And even slight damage, the document tells us, to tent fabric with a low tear strength makes it especially susceptible to larger holes. Now, these little nicks are obviously meant to simulate minor damage, such as might be caused by catching the tent with a, a peg or, uh, or stepping on it on, on rough ground or something along those lines. So we're going to take advantage of the little notches that Hilleberg have cut in this for us and we're going to see just how much weight is required to to uh, tear these straight across the fabric. So each of these bits of fabric comes with a tear strength underneath, 1.1 to 2.5 kilograms for commonly used ripstop, right up to 25 kilograms for the curl on 2500. Now, the 25 kilograms is the reason I chose that water container there because 25 litres of water is 25 kilograms. Now obviously there's going to be some additional weight because the can itself weighs something and the 
pliers and the G clamps, they weigh something as well. So I'm going to get those weighed and we'll uh, and we'll see what we get to before we even start. Okay, so it only matters that I weigh one pair of pliers and one G clamp. You'll see why shortly. But 632 grams for those two little bits of gear. And then 1.286 kilograms for the water container and the bit of rope that's on top. What I am going to do, I'm going to just, I'm going to take the lid off. You'll see why. Um, because I don't need the lid. Okay, so with the lid off, it's 1,147 grams. So doing a bit of quick maths, if I add the 632 grams to that, we get 1,780 grams. So that's about 1.8-ish kilograms, um, which in theory, according to Hilleberg, could potentially be enough to tear this commonly used ripstop fabric here. But let's see. Okay, so let me show you exactly where I'm going with this. There is my piece of test fabric. Down here is the 1.8-ish kilograms lower part of the test rig. So there's already 1.8 kilograms of stress on that piece of fabric there with a little tear in it. And above is exactly the same setup again. Another pair of pliers held in a G-clamp with a rope up to my rose arch up there. So hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. I'm going to add water to the barrel underneath. Every litre of water I add to the barrel is one kilogram added to here. So we should be able to see exactly how much pressure is required to tear each piece of fabric. So let's go. One point to note, the first piece of what Hilleberg call typical ripstop fabric tore with just the test rig on it. So 1.8 kilograms tore the first piece of the uh, typical tent fabric. Um, so let's try testing the second piece. We'll start with one litre of water in here. So we've got about just over 300 millilitres left in there, which means that we've put about 0.7 kilograms into that, which means, if I'm not very much mistaken, that fabric tore at 2.5 kilograms, which is exactly the upper limit of what Hilleberg said a typical ripstop fabric would take. Okay, so here's the first piece of Curlon ready to go. This is Curlon 1000. And we're going to uh, we're going to crack on now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to test each of these pieces of fabric I've got twice, and uh, and put an average reading up on the screen at the end to show you what I found. So uh, I'm going to pop this whole experiment on a time lapse and fly through these because each one's taking quite a long time to get done. Here we go. That's it. Um, interesting results. Um, let me pack this away and I'll tell you what happened. Okay, so some very, very surprising results actually. And I want to start this section by saying 
I'm not here to criticize Hilleberg. That's not why I did this experiment. I love my Hilleberg tent. I have the Anjan 2, which is made of the Hilleberg Curl on 1000 material, and I think it's wonderful. Uh, I also have a solo black label on order. Um, so, I mean, I love my Hillebergs. I think they are the best tents, no questions asked. Um, however, I was genuinely curious to find out what results I could get from this experiment. So here's what I found to be my results. Now, is there a more scientific way of testing this material? Of course there is. I'm in the garden with G-clamps, you know, and water barrels. Come on. It's not the most accurate test in the world. However, you have to accept that there is a certain amount of reality in this experiment and the results that I'm about to share with you might surprise you. So here we go. The typical ripstop material provided by Hilleberg. Uh, minimum tear strength on that was uh, 1.8. Maximum was 2.5 kilograms, which is right in the window of what Hilleberg claims on their document that they send out with the fabric samples. Curl on 1000. Minimum tear strength, three kilograms. Maximum tear strength, 3.5 kilograms. Now, Hilleberg claims eight kilogram tear strength. Curl on 1200, minimum 5.5, maximum 5.9 kilograms. Hilleberg claims 12 kilograms. Curl on 1800, Minimum 6.5 kilograms, maximum 6.8. Hilleberg claim 18 kilograms. Curl on 2500. This is the material that Hilleberg reserved for their biggest, most um, hardcore, extreme, strongest tents. Minimum 9.3 kilograms, maximum 9.5 kilograms. Hilleberg claim. 25 kilograms. Now something doesn't add up, so I have two theories to explain this. Firstly, I suspect Hilleberg's claimed tear strengths are based on undamaged material. Secondly, the experiment as I conducted it, I wonder whether the clamps that I used damaged the material beyond the slit that was already put in the material by Hilleberg. Um, both of these factors could be true. Are there more variables to consider? Yes, of course there are. Have I done the most scientific experiment in the world? No, of course not. Um, however, it's interesting that the results that I got are so dramatically different from what is claimed by Hilleberg here. Um, does it change my opinion of Hilleberg tents? No, of course not. However, what you have to consider is that if you have an undamaged tent, then yes, these tear strengths may indeed apply to your tent. However, if you damaged your tent even slightly, then based on these results, it looks as if you have to accept that the tear strength of that fabric has been dramatically reduced. Uh, in some cases by well over half um, and that's about it uh, interesting experiment I thought I hope you found it useful if you haven't then absolutely fine let me know in the comments what you think um, if I do get hold of some more fabric samples at any point in the future I may test the undamaged end of the fabric uh, in the same way to see what happens I may be able to refine the experiment to ensure that the way I clamp the material doesn't damage it at all, um, but that is certainly something that I will have to consider with some future samples of material uh, that I manage to get hold of. So uh, leave that with me. Uh, for now, this is Richie for Wild Astro, signing off.